currently am a, uh, an MA student here at IU in East Asian Studies, but my, in my former life, I was a chef. Um, I, you know, went to culinary school, worked my way up from line level positions to uh, chef de cuisine and chef positions. And when I left the, uh, the chef life, I was a development chef doing uh, sort of corporate recipe development and menu writing for a cruise line. Why did I choose this career? I was very passionate about food when I was younger, um, kind of the pace and the excitement and um, the energy of the restaurant kitchen and the restaurant life really appealed to me. And so I, you know, I went after that after, uh, after I graduated college. So it was, I mean, it was a great career. I did it for nearly 20 years and um, yeah, I wouldn't trade that time for anything. Does your career have a global international component? Yeah, it did, absolutely. I spent a lot of time working with uh, foreigners here in the US, whether it was um, Mexican, Latino, uh, South American immigrants uh, in kitchens from, I mean, everywhere from New York, Chicago, San Francisco, uh, to some of the very high-end restaurants I worked in. Uh, I worked with a lot of um, a lot of cooks and chefs that were in the U.S. on skilled labor visas. So Europeans, French, um, Italian, uh, Asians, Korea, Japan, China, Singapore, a lot of, worked with a lot of Singapore's Singaporeans in my in my time um and so yeah that I mean there's a huge multicultural component to that working with different people how to com communicate how to relate to them motivations you know as a in the role of a, as a manager uh it was important to understand that sort of thing and then I also had the opportunity to spend three years uh running a, a hotel steakhouse in Tokyo Japan in which case that, I mean, obviously a huge international component there. Um, I had very little um, experience, knowledge of Japanese culture and certainly none of the language before I went, but, um, but that experience, you know, blew me away and it's led to what I'm doing now, which is uh, studying East Asian language and culture you know, from the academic side of things. What foreign language or international multicultural skills do you need for this position? Yeah, I mean, as a chef, as mentioned, you, as you move up, you know, and with pretty much any industry, um, you go from working alongside people in the kitchen to managing people in the kitchen. And so um, understanding, you know, like when I was in Japan, understanding the Japanese work culture and how that operates and how it's very different from the American work culture. That was a huge learning curve for me, a uh, source of huge frustration when I started and then eventually became a, you know, something I was, uh, a system I was able to work within and work with in order to, uh, you know, to get the best out of my team. Um, there's foreign language skills. Absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I spoke zero Japanese when I went to Japan, but by the time I left, I was conducting my day-to-day -day operations within the kitchen uh, more in Japanese than I was in English. Uh, even here in the U.S., like I said, at um, you know Michelin star French restaurants when I was in New York, um, my high school level knowledge of French uh, helped me a lot not just in the, not in the, not only in the direct, you know, day-to-day -day workings of my job, but it allowed me to build relationships with, uh, with my managers, my chefs, and then with some of my coworkers that was, was deeper and, and allowed me to perform better in that environment. 
than had I not had those skills. Same thing with Spanish. Um, my Spanish is very rough around the edges, but it is, uh, it's enough to let me communicate effectively, at least in a kitchen environment and work with people. And again, the ability to build a rapport with either your coworkers or people working for you is really invaluable, especially in a high pressure, high intensity environment like a restaurant kitchen. What skills did you develop or wish you had developed as a student that would have benefited you as you pursued this career path? Or if you're a supervisor, what skills do you want your future employees to have as they enter this field? Um, I mean, that says it right there. Language skills, when I was in school, I did not, I did not understand how they would be applicable. I mean, I grew up in Southern Indiana, you know, not even a lot of, you know, not a very multicultural place. I mean, it's become more so in the intervening years, there's a larger Mexican community in, in where I grew up in Evansville. Um, you know, there's a larger uh, Asian community, et cetera. But I figured I would, you know, I, a, I figured I would always live in the United States. It didn't, I didn't have any connections outside of the country that would lead me to move or, or to work outside of the country. And in my estimation, you know, English was good enough. It was, it's, you know, I was American working in America, but, um, as I progressed in my career, you know, especially going to bigger cities where there is, you know, it is more multicultural there. There are people from all over the place that you're working with. Um, you know, on the very basic end, a rudimentary basic understanding of, of Spanish being, and, and not only going into it, knowing some of that language, but the more, the more you exercise that skill of learning a language, like if you really learn a language very well when you're either young or in university, um, sets you up for learning languages faster down the road. For example, coming out of high school and college uh, the first time, I had studied French and my level was very, my speaking and listening, my fluency was very poor. You know, I, like a lot of students, I could read and write reasonably well, but my my ability to communicate was was quite poor. And then after that working in restaurants and again, using Spanish, that was a very slow process. What, what little ability I have with Spanish, but what ability I have is it's fluent, it's communicative. Um, you know, I can't read and write in Spanish, uh, well at all, but I kind of help develop those, those, those neural pathways, those, you know, those synapses, get them firing for learning the communicative side of language. So that later when I was working with a lot of French folks, um, in a, in a, in a French restaurant, I was able to draw on the knowledge I had from my schooling, but then combine that with sort of this newfound ability to speak more fluently and more, more naturally. And my, my ability to communicate in French skyrocketed. And then obviously going to Japan, very different language from, you know, the European romance languages I had studied and, you know, had some ability with previously, but having that, that ability and, and, and sort of knowing how my mind works and, and how I'm able to communicate uh, really helped. I mean, it was obviously it was a difficult process. What what little Japanese I have, but uh, I was able to learn a lot quicker than than if I had not. Outside of that, obviously, just just being, you know, having more of a multicultural mindset is huge. Um, like I say, I, obviously, when I was working in Japan outside of the country, but but even here in the in the U.S., like I say, I've worked with. I mean, over my career, hundreds of either immigrants or people in the country on a visa, um, especially in, you know, in, in, the, in the restaurant business, you've got everything from, you know, from very casual restaurants, you're dealing with a very multicultural environment, all the way up to very high-end, you know, four-star Michelin, 
you don't have four Michelin stars, but you know, Michelin rated restaurants, you know, highly rated luxury hotels, that sort of thing. There you've, you've a lot of times got people um, that are brought in for, again, special expertise on a working visa that are from all over, you know, all over the world, depending on the, the type of cuisine you're doing. So um, an understanding in this, an understanding and an openness and being able to work with people from all cultures is, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely vital. What advice do you have for students who are interested in this career? Yeah. I mean, being a chef is a, it's a totally different ball of wax. Uh, it's a very, you know, it's a wild uh, sort of mix of You know, it's, it walks that line between professional and uh, very, being very blue collar, uh, which is one thing that I loved about it. You know, I, I, you're really in the trenches and you're, you're sweating it and you're working hard and your feet hurt, and your back hurts and you get cut and you get burned. And it's, a, you know, it's, it's a real, it's a real invigorating um, environment to be in. So in that respect, um, you know, you have to be hungry for that, that sort of thing. You need to, you need to work well under pressure. You need to, um, you know, just have that drive to succeed, um, when things are difficult. Cause it's a, like I say, it's a high pressure, it's a difficult job. Um, and in that respect, it's just a function of diving in head first and, and doing the work, you know, just, just just grinding, you know, and to, to use a, maybe an overused phrase, um, to get the experience, to gain the knowledge, to gain the skill. Um, but on the professional side, obviously there's, you know, there's aspects of, um, of business that you need to understand specifically, you know, things, things that are, that are specific to the hospitality business. Um, as you raise up, you know, if I came up in kitchens, but by the time I was a chef, I was, you know, overseeing the operations of the restaurant. I was responsible for the kitchen, but I had a much bigger hand in what was going on in the front of the house, in the dining room. So you need to learn, you know, aspects of service, um, you know, kind of have a bigger picture view of what's going on inside the operation. And then what for me was really a game changer in my career was the opportunity to work um, outside of the country. And when you're in that position, yeah, cultural training, um, you know, which I, I didn't have a lot of formally um, before out of that experience, but learned a lot on the fly, put in a lot of work, um, you know, outside of, my time in the restaurant to understand, you know, in this, in this instance, it was Japanese culture, Japanese work culture, um, you know, the, the differences culturally between, um, between the U S and Japan. And so that sort of thing, that's a skill now that, um, I mean, years later, I still get, uh, emails and phone calls from recruiters, looking for people that have experience, um, you know, working outside of Asia or outside of the country working in Asia, um, because it's a whole, you know, when you look at, obviously there's a ton of opportunity here in the U.S. in nearly any industry, right? But if you can expand your, your, you know, your job market beyond what's just here in the U.S., your potential for growth, your potential for earnings, and then your potential for, for personal growth and, um, you know, challenging yourself and learning a new culture and a new environment just expands hugely. So, um, you know, that sort of thing, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. It was a great experience for me and put me in a position where, you know, the, the pandemic hit and I, you know, I was in a relatively stable position, but it just, you know, made everybody 
re reassess what they were doing, especially in the hospitality industry. Cause I went from working on ships to working from home. And so, you know, made me think about, well, if there was something else I was doing with my life, what would it be? And I realized that it was this aspect and this to just, I mean, just the, you know, the richness and the, the history and all that stuff that's a part of Japanese culture. And I, I said, I want to, I want to understand that better for myself. And I want to put myself in a position where I can help translate that and kind of help build those bridges with, uh, with others. So that's led me to, uh, back to graduate school to study area studies. So, um, yeah, I, it's a, it's a big world out there and the more, the more you're equipped to navigate it and the more skills and cultural competencies and that sort of thing that you learn in school can only serve to, uh, to help you as you, as you move forward in your career, whether it's, whether it's in restaurant kitchens, uh, or, or in any industry, I have to believe. So that's what I got. All right. Thanks.